Hey friends, welcome back to my studio. I'm so happy you're here. I hope you're having an awesome day. I'm gonna paint a cow, a Highland cow, on a 20 by 20 inch uh, gallery wrapped canvas from Michaels. It's an inch and a half thick. Uh, the reference photo is on Unsplash. I'll link it in this video description. Isn't that cute? I've edited a little bit in Photoshop. I lightened, boy, look at the glare. Sorry about that. I've lightened the, the sky a little bit. And then this is a road, but I'm thinking I'm gonna have it be water. Be kind of fun. I'm gonna write the word love on my canvas here with chalk pastel. I always do that. Um, I, I'm trying to remember to show you because I think it's fun. It's a great way to start a painting. Oh, and if you want to paint a Highland cow with a traceable, I've already got one up on my website, anitro.com. I think you'll really like it. I call that painting hippie hair. Okay, let's get started. I finished painting my background and I set up a actually this I don't know what I said earlier but this is a 24 by 24 inch canvas if that makes a difference for you for those of you watching I mixed up a uh, color close to Naples yellow with some cad yellow white and a little pinch of burnt umber um, just because I had more yellow in my studio so I mixed it up and then I was noticing after I got my traceable on, well here, I'm gonna, I'll point and then I'll get it closer. That this eye looked like it was floating because you kind of have a shadow of it. And then I realized when I drew a line across my reference photo and I drew a line straight across, actually the corner of the eye starts there and there's a little shadow that might be important as we paint this portrait. Just so the eye doesn't look like it, one eye goes up too high because it's, it's pretty much a straight on view. So then the eye should be straight. So I'll show you. So I just kind of drew a little, I don't know if you can see it, but I drew a little light line across. But there's so much hair over it, which I love about these Highland cows, that you don't really see it, but I think, I think we're gonna need it. We'll find out. And then I'm gonna paint, so in the reference photo, this is a road, but I kind of curved it a little more, and I'm gonna turn it into a stream. And then down here, Instead of gray road, it's gonna be a, a muted blue stream. So I put out Prussian blue, neutral gray five, and some white. And I think I'm gonna start with the sky and the stream. Uh, mostly the sky so that I can paint trees off in the distance, kinda of like we did in Pirouetting. It's a coneflower painting video that I did. Uh, I'm not sure how we're gonna handle this, but I think we'll just try to keep it simple like I do in other paintings. And we'll be off and running. Okay guys, I'll pop in after a bit. pop in with a couple thoughts. I've got really thin layer of blue sky so that my my sort of Naples yellow background is showing through. I may cover it up, I may not. And then, um, oh my, my painting's wet on the bottom. And let a little yellow show through back here in the water. And then down here, I, wow, there's a hint of yellow. But I'm just, kind of indicating there's some rocks or mud. And I'm just kind of indicating water right now. That might be good enough, and I painted the bottom. That might be good enough or we may, we may need to do more. And that's with Prussian Blue Neutral Gray 5. Um, I used, I think it's a three quarter inch Simply Simmons flat shader. 
but I don't, I must have left it in the water. It's, it's, I don't know if you can tell, but it's bowing and it's swelling, but that actually doesn't bother me. <laughs> the, this part of the brush is still really nice. And then for the next part, I've got out some Hooker's Green, whoops, wrong color, Hooker's Green Deep Hue Permanent. That's quite a name. It, oh, it looks almost black. It's right here on my palette. Got a little bit left. And then I just mixed it with some straight up white. And I also put some Naples Yellow out on my palette. So this is gonna be my background palette. Since I use these little plates, I usually have a couple palettes going for painting this size. And what I'm thinking is grayer greens here and here. So I'm thinking I'm gonna paint, my darkest color is gonna be that green. Maybe a little darker. And then I'll save almost black or really dark green for the base of the trees and maybe here. My light's coming from this direction. You know, maybe some darker greens around the, the water, the road that I turned into water. And then as I come forward, I'll warm up the greens a little bit, but we'll just kind of indicate. I'm not sure exactly how, what we'll end up, but we'll probably paint horizontal strokes, to be, especially here, to begin with. And then if we want to add a little detail, we'll paint some verticals for grasses or bushes or something. Okay, I just wanted to let you know what I put on my palette and what I'm thinking. I'll be back in a bit. pop in um, sometimes I, I forget to start the video for the time-lapse part of this so one of the things I'm thinking is gray or greener back off into the distance um, there's not much sky but it gets a little lighter as it comes down I left quite a bit of the yellow and I think I like that I think I mentioned I left a little bit of yellow here in my first attempts at the water so what I think I'm gonna do is have it uh, my reference photo isn't that helpful. <laughs> I'm going to grab it. So hopefully you can... Ooh, bad glare. Because I've got a window right there. Um, maybe if I get it closer. That doesn't really help either. There's just not a lot of information back here. But one thing you can keep in mind is things get grayer as they go in the distance. So I did, and I'm, and it doesn't really have any light to it, except for right here in my reference photo, there is some uh, warm, warmer greens. So I'm just, since there's light coming on this side of the cow, we'll just have light coming or hitting the right side of everything else. So I kind of have some lighter here, lighter here. I'm trying to think shapes, and then sometimes I come back in and put a little detail um, hints of pine trees. I did add a little warmth here, which might be too soon. But I think it'll be okay. So I I'm going to gradually come warmer. I think I'll have my, my warmest grasses ground here. And then I think I'll cool it off again. And it actually does that in the reference photo too. So anyway, and then I'll have some, um, I'll put in some dark bank on the side. Kind of like I did down here. Okay, I just wanted to pop in and let you know what I'm thinking. Oh, here, maybe you, um, sorry guys, maybe you want to see my palette. So it really hasn't changed much. I mixed a warmer, I mixed some of my, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Hooker's green deep hue with some of the um, Naples yellow to make this puddle. And this is just uh, the deep hue, Hooker's green deep hue with some white, so it's grayer. And then I've even sometimes added a little neutral, neutral gray five to gray things out. Okay, I hope that helps a bit. Let's take a second and see what I'm up to. So what I'm thinking, when I look at my phone here, I really like that this is soft and pushed back. You can't really tell yet, but I'm gonna paint more contrast in this Highland cow. I might want a little darker area to define that bank a little more, but the sun's shining on it too. So that's always, but it could be like mud and water. So we could do it. And I think, oh, you can't see down here, but maybe some dark down there. But instead of keeping on fussing with the background, I'm gonna start working on the cow. So here, maybe you wanna take a little, little, little look. So I may, I don't know, I'm never really quite happy with my backgrounds, but um, it really does depend on the rest of the painting too. I think the water's pretty good. I like the, I like turning that road into a stream or, yeah, I suppose it's a stream. And I end up putting more darks in the trees in the background. I might end up lightening those back up again. <laughs> here, let's see, there's not as much going on over here, but that's where I was thinking like, I need some blacks or some really darks. And I'm just gonna use that Prussian blue as black or I'll use uh, Prussian blue and some burnt umber and make a black. There's really nothing else on this other side. It's just my cow. Okay, on my palette. So now I've saved my background palette and I've started a new palette. So Prussian blue. Um, by the way, whenever I don't, I, you guys let me know in the comments, but Prussian blue and burnt umber are always sort of chalkier, thicker, and uh, not nearly as creamy, creamy as like this red oxide or the Naples yellow or the titanium white. Let me know if you have that same experience. I'm using Liquitex paints, um, a combination of heavy body and um, basics. I think it has to do with the pigments to make the color. Okay, and I'm just, as I mentioned, I'll just mix, this looks black or I'll mix bur the burnt umber and the Prussian blue together to get a black. And I'm gonna start working on the eyes and the nose because hair goes over those. Oh, and probably the horns. And then I'll be back in a bit.
Hey, thought I'd stop and just share a couple thoughts. So as I look into my phone, I like the background pretty well. I'm still not sure if I'm crazy about, I might want this lighter, but I, I never like my background. So I need to wait till I get this Highland cow painted in. And then I've reloaded my palette I don't know, a couple times. I don't know how many times I put out more Burnt Umber and I'm just about out. Um, all the colors. So Prussian Blue, Burnt Umber, Naples, Naples Yellow, and Titanium White. Because I'm going through a lot of paint to cover and then the acrylic paint shrinks. So even though I've got this gold background, I don't always want the gold popping through. It's gonna in some places. So let's take a look. So I think it's covering pretty well there, but I can't see what you guys are seeing in my phone. But I don't know if you can see a couple places. Yeah, I don't know if it's showing. Let's see here. Oh, it's wet down there. <laughs> Maybe right here. I don't know if I'm gonna worry about it too much, much more tonight. I've got a really good, I don't know, maybe three layers where I'd put in the darks. Oh, I can see it popping a little bit. And then put in some lights and then put in the darks <laughs> and just keep doing it. And then I don't like have every hair. I just kind of have some hair direction. Oh, sorry about the glare. And then I think I'll come back when I look at it, it doesn't look as dark as when I'm showing you. Oh, there, if I get it closer, you can see it better. Then I think I'll come back and put in some of the light hairs that come over. I've got some of them lighter, actually. So we'll just play with it and see what we think as we go. But yeah, it doesn't have to match exactly. This is in shadow. That's kind of all we need to really say. And then I like to paint the cow's hair, so then I put that in there. I'm seeing some places where it's popped through. I might leave it because it just keeps shrinking and then if I even if I put another color over it You know, it's gonna pop the color underneath it as it shrinks gonna show it's just kind of what acrylic does so I just wanted to pop in and let you know that that's what I'm doing and You know, I've got about three coats on that area right there and the, the cow's starting to take shape Oh the eye the eyes pretty whoop the eyes pretty good, too The horns I don't think are done, but they're in good shape. They're pretty simple. But the eye, the one eye gets covered by hair and then that eye is in really good shape. Okay, well I will be back tomorrow. Actually tomorrow's alive, so I probably won't be back for a day or two. Hey friends, let's stop a minute and um, I'm going to share a couple things that I'm thinking. Hopefully they're a little bit helpful. So I've been using, grab my brushes here. This is, I think, a one inch craft brush. And I just ended up using it. I mean, a longer handle could get me a little further back from the painting. 
but it's been really fun for doing a million uh, brush strokes for the, the Highland cow's hair. <laughs> and then I even came back and like glazed over. So I'm like, oh, that's just, we want more shadow there, that kind of thing. Um, I am following my reference photo pretty close, but I'm making this area darker because I want the face to have the lightest lights. So let's see if we can get a decent look with, I've got window glare, I've got light glare. So yeah, I didn't make this nearly, <laughs> nearly as light as it is in the reference photo on purpose. I can always come back and lighten it up. I don't know if I mentioned that before. And then I'm also using, oh, I don't think that's quite an inch, maybe a three quarter inch flat brush. Um, I'm pretty sure this was a Simply Simmons. Yes, it says flat shader. I don't know what number it, 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 it is. And then I've got a Royal Langnickel 3 8 inch angle brush. And I'm using that more for the ear. And then what I do is like I put in like there was kind of a triangle shape in this ear and I might even put it back as I look at my reference photo. I kind of painted it out. So I, I don't always work dark to light because I also put in some light right away over this horn. And I also came in and put some bl more black, darker colors on this horn. So I keep kind of adjusting the values. Um, and then I just layer after layer after layer, which you don't, you don't have to do that. I'm just saying that's what I am doing. You don't have to, but I also like I get some fun, like I work little sections out of the time and I get some fun wet on wet blending. Here, you probably want to see up close. So I don't know that that ear is done, but it's in good shape. Just like that eye is in good shape, but I don't know that it's done. Because I'll come back with white and then maybe even, because the sun is hitting that top of that ear. I know I'm going to come back with some white or lighter colors for that horn. Oh, and then I also adjusted, I brought, here, I'm gonna set it down so I can point. I put in some, you could call them sky holes, but I just put in some background bushes, bush holes. <laughs> and then I also lightened this one up to bring it forward because I have some yellows running almost up to here. And then I quick jump in atmospheric perspective and I have bluer grays and greener grays. And then it jumps again so it kind of jumps right here, and then it jumps again really quick here. So I really, so I have like some slow steps because this cow is really close to you. I don't know if you can tell here, but I kept it warmer. And then I, I kept it warmer here a little bit too, and then I jump, jump. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'll show you now. And I don't know that that's done, but I think I'm liking it better. Okay, so here, maybe you want to see the, that fur. There's a lot of layers. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm bending over sideways and it's making my voice <laughs> a little rougher. And I'm trying to square it up. And I've got like little cattail or something things. And that nose isn't done. Okay, hopefully those comments help. It's kind of the things I'm thinking. I think one of the fun things about this painting it might be my third Highland Cow painting, is really playing. I really love how the um, hair is blown in the wind, and I'm really excited. I don't know if you can see that, but there's like hairs blown on the top. I'm really excited to get to the face. I think I've been working off and on for about two weeks on this painting. Um, I don't know how many hours, because I've been really busy lately, so it's kind of been a couple hours here, a couple hours there. Okay. Thank you for hanging out with me this far. I'm gonna paint some more and I'll be back in a bit. Hey, I thought I'd pop in again pretty quick here. So I'm using this, 
I always forget, 3 8 3 8 inch Royal Langnickel angle brush. And I'm really liking it for getting some color down around the eyes and on the side of the face here. Oh, don't wanna go too low. I'm zoomed in pretty quick. So I am like, my camera is just to the left side of my head. It's like two inches away. <laughs> we're, we're on top of this with my, my phone. And then occasionally I stick my palette. I missed it with some water. I haven't mentioned this in a while. So I missed it. I've got, this was eyeglass cleaner, so it's a nice fine spray. Um, I cleaned it out, gosh, I don't know how long ago. And then I just missed it with a little bit of water. Stick it in that gallon baggie. And it's kind of like a terrarium. And it, it'll help keep your paints going a little longer because they like to dry out. Um, sometimes, as long as I'm thinking about that topic, sometimes I'll stick my palette knife in a little bit of water. And especially like burnt, burnt umber always comes out thicker and drier. I'll cut a little water into it. The downside is, is the water um, evaporates fast. Like if you, you could put a little matte medium in there, but it'll make the color more transparent. And then the water makes it dry faster. So it's kind of like whichever your preference is. Eventually you just gotta put out fresh paint. But you can see I've been working on this, what would I say, two weeks on this cow? And this is the same palette for, for this is my cow palette. So I'm still using it. And then like these little mixing areas dry up, but that's okay, I just mix right on top of it again. Okay, hopefully that helps. And the other thing I wanted to pop in is like I'll paint the shadow shape, which you can really see quite well here. And then I, I'm starting now to paint some color around it. And then I'll just keep bringing up the values, but not too much on this side because the light's coming from over here. But basically I paint the shapes and after a while I stop looking at my reference photo. I'm like, okay, I know the fur, is that too close? Oh no, you can see that. I know we've got a nice sort of hair flip here, sort of a Justin Bieber thing when he was young going on. <laughs> Maybe I should call this Justin Bieber. That'd be kind of funny. Um, put in the comments any title ideas. I was also thinking stray hair because I've already started to put in a few stray hairs. Um, if I paint them out, it's okay. It just kind of reminds me of where things are going and what I'm thinking. Okay, I hope those comments help you guys. I'll be back in a little while. Hey friends, just a thought or two. I'm looking at my painting in my phone and it's really starting to come together. I haven't used any white yet on purpose. Um, lot, I mean, on my reference photo, it's really, really light. Here, let's see if I can shrink it. Oh gosh, I don't know if that looks very good on video, but it's really light on the one, there, that's better, on the one side of the face. So we need to add whites. I'm getting pretty happy with the hair on top, but I, I need more brush strokes just to keep it consistent with over here. The shadow makes sense now that I've got more of the cow face in. So you can see the shadow of the horn. I assume that's the ear and then the face. So the light's coming down this way. I changed the background again, but not a lot, but I blurred, I had, I think one thing that was bugging me, which may not have been a big deal, but like here I, I made a softer edge. I softened this up some. I made a softer, like I've changed this, I don't know how many times right over here. Made a soft edge here, another softer edge there. Oh, and I also added some browns in over here. Just, just I just took a brush 
and just like twisted it <laughs> with some brown paint on it. Here, you probably want to see what I'm talking about. See, look at, you can literally see like a little loop-de-loop. -loop. But when you get back just a smidge, I think that looks really nice. And it warms it up a little bit more in the foreground, which I like. Here, there's where I added some more brown. I just twisted some brown on. I think that's funny. I don't know if I've showed you a close-up of the ear. I'm starting to cover that eye. I might even cover it a little bit more when I add some whites. You know, I don't know if I'm going to touch the horns anymore. I might. But I really haven't in quite a long time. Here's the other horn. And then I don't know if I can here if I can turn it. Oh, yep. It goes over onto the side of the painting. Oh, I might need to paint that a little more. So the background, I added I had edges everywhere and I thought, well, sh we need to lose some edges. I mean, I've lost some edges in here. Those trees aren't very defined, but I, I wanted to lose a few more. I don't know if that makes sense. And I'm going to add quite a bit more white. But I was thinking this last part of this video might go pretty quick and you won't be able to see the changes as easily. So I, kinda, I lost an edge here so I didn't have so much of a line. Okay, some little little tour of what's going on. This is the fun part now. So I'm going to work on the nose and get that g more refined. I think I might even pull out a uh, little quinacridone or something to have it really pop. Otherwise here, I haven't changed my palette since the beginning. I'm still using the same uh, cow palette is what I call it. The paints are getting kind of old and sticky. It's been, I don't know, two and a half, three weeks I've been working on this off and on. So still the same colors, but I might introduce one more just sort of like, just to make that really stand out. I like doing that. Okay guys, really not much else to say, I don't think. I think the ears are really fun. I put in some dots for fun. Oh, here, I probably should show you. <laughs> here, I don't remember. If, see, I don't remember when I, when I video over this much time, I don't remember what I say. See the dots in the ear? Isn't that kind of fun? And I've got one kind of on the end of that the hair and there's one oh I can reach it there I think it's just kind of entertaining it's the only reason I do that and now that I've got pretty much the the basic sweep of where the hair goes I can see it it'll be much more fun I'll be able to get looser brush strokes in there and play with color and, and to me that's a lot of fun okay I'll be back at in a bit or I'll be back at the end done so I would make a little change step back take a photo go oh like I needed to kind of square off part of the would that be a cheek no maybe that's a cheek part of the mouth <laughs> and then take a photo and I'm like okay I want more contrast 
darker here or I want to break up because I kind of had this really dark shadow and it was too big of a shape so then I lightened this up and I just I keep making little changes here and there I had this whiter up here and then I glazed over some of the Naples yellow just stuff like that and then another thing I did is I added just a teeny teeny bit of quinacridone magenta on my palette and then I put a little bit on the nose and when it's wet it looks really good and I put a little bit in the ear a little bit in that ear um, I don't know if I needed it or not but it just was kind of fun and I did it and the quinacridone magenta is transparent so it just glazes right over which is really nice um, what else do we, I want to say I just kind of kept playing with the shadows um, did I already say this? I had some dark eyelashes in here and then I went back and put in kind of greenish gray ones. Um, I had the dark ones in there just to remind me that I needed to do that and I almost forgot. I think it's looking really good. I've got, so this is sort of softer, there isn't any white. It's almost a little wetter. Um, I used a bigger brush on that area just because I could. But on this area I couldn't quite control it as much as I wanted to so I used oh what is that a 3 8 inch um, Royal Langnickel angle brush and this one's probably about an inch craft it's just a craft brush I don't know what the brand is I mean I could have done it I don't know some, for some reason I just kept going back to this little guy I think that's about all I need to say I won't um I'll save that palette until I varnish it. And I know the painting's protected. So there's the eyelashes. Look at all those, <laughs> look at, I'm gonna call it stray hair, um, singular, just because it's kind of funny because there's a lot of stray hair. I don't know, you can kind of see the magenta in the ear. Oh, and then on my reference photo, there's a lot more white right here. But I didn't want to call so much attention to it. I want I want the attention more here. So that's where I put most of the white. Or your life values. It doesn't have to be white. You might want to see. I don't know if you can see the quinacridone on the nose. Isn't that funny? That's kind of a wet. I think it had been drinking. <laughs> so that was a road. But it just kind of looked like it had been drinking water. So I made the road a river. I like how the light is kind of coming underneath. Oh, and like there's little cattails or something. Isn't that fun? Oh, and then this, I don't know if I can show you. I've got to lean over. So this part of the body that's not in shadow from the head, um, I didn't put any white. I think I said this before. I didn't put any white in it so that it uh, fades back a little bit and the face comes forward more. And I really didn't change the horns much. I just put a little bit of white on it. Okay, let me know what questions you might have. Let me know what you think. The sky is kind of fun. It's sort of either early morning or late evening, or starting to be late evening, which fits. I mean, um, in my reference photo, I can't remember what the sky looks like, but it fits just because the light's kind of coming from the side almost. Okay, <laughs> I hope some of those comments help. I think it's just so much fun and it takes a while it takes a while like I paint the shape of the shadow and then I kind of paint some of the hairs around it and then I change the direction of the hairs and then sometimes I put in an extra wild hair that isn't even in the reference photo and I just kind of keep building up and down until I'm happy with it okay thank you thank you for hanging out with me oh we just decided recently on one of the lives to start a Facebook group where you can share your art with me and a bunch of other people and we can share art hugs and I mean you can post knitting or a song whatever it doesn't have to be art it could be woodworking sculpture creative things that you are up to um, I'm even really excited to see your fuzzy loved ones or your feathery loved ones or your scaly loved loved ones I think that's super fun okay so um, I'll have a link in this video description to the new Facebook group. Uh, what else do I need to say? Thank you, thank you, thank you everybody for all your support. This has just been super fun for me. 
great big happy art hugs and I hope to chat with you soon. Bye guys.